Call 67979781. Well, good morning. How are you this morning? I hope everything's good with you. This is Adrian Kennedy, and from now until midday today, as always, every day of the week between 10 and 12 here at 98FM, this is Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Now, we have a lot of stuff to get through on the programme, including a little bit later on. We're going to be talking about that uh, protest. There's more than a couple of hundred people uh, at that. There were quite an amount of people at uh, the protest uh, on Saturday afternoon against face masks and lockdown and all of that. And we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later on. But first, uh, most businesses, not all, but most businesses are open now um, well over a month. Bars, restaurants, you name it. Um, shopping centres, big stores, the whole lot. Um, now, what I want to hear from you for the next while, and, and I have a reason for asking this, a message that we got from a lady called uh, Sarah Louise. Um, be it your local cafe, pub, shopping centre, restaurant, whatever, um, have you found uh, lapses in COVID protocols in uh, the shops or restaurants or bars that you have visited over the last uh, couple of weeks? And the reason I ask this is, uh, I want you to send me a WhatsApp voice note to 0877 98 98 98. Don't name the business, uh, but tell us what you have witnessed. If you have witnessed... Uh, a company not playing ball with the COVID-19 protocols. The reason I ask this is Sarah Louise sent us this message over the weekend on our Facebook page and she says, You definitely need to talk about this, lads. Have any of you noticed that when you go into a shop or restaurant now, it is a free-for-all? They've all let their guard down. I was in a cafe the other day and it was all over the place. I brought my mother and she insisted that we left. Tables were on top of each other. They weren't wiping down the menus after other customers using them, handing us the cutlery with bare hands. The funny thing is, three weeks ago I was in the exact same place and it was a lot more strict. They didn't even ask for our phone number when we arrived. My mum, who's over 60, felt so uneasy that we left. Is it just me, or have places dropped their standards? And that's from a lady called uh, Sarah Louise. <clears throat> and excuse, um, I would love to hear from you on 67979781 or send me a WhatsApp voice note to 0877989898. In what way have you uh, witnessed companies letting their guard down. I know, for example, friends of mine yesterday were in uh, one of the city's very big shopping centres and said it was like uh, Christmas week. It was overrun with people. There were far too many people, is what I was told, uh, in one particular big shopping centre here in Dublin on uh, yesterday, actually, on Sunday. So, let me know, in what way have you witnessed companies starting to let their guard down a little bit with the COVID-19 uh, protocols? Peter, tell me what you witnessed over the weekend. And again, we're not naming companies. I don't want to be naming yeah. and shaming, yeah. but just I just want to hear stories. No, I went in shopping over the weekend. I just noticed this over the last couple of weeks where um, my shops and that have uh, hand sanitizations and uh, for wiping down trolleys and stuff like that. And from the time I walked in the door where I was uh, using it on my hands and on the trolley, a woman walked in by me, another woman walked in about five seconds later. Mm -hmm. And from the time I got from there to the end of the aisle, before I went around the corner, looking back up, just watching, there was nine people that walked in and never used the uh, sanitizing station for their hands or wiping down the trolley. And more importantly, obviously nobody told them to or asked them to no, either, did they? Nobody, there was nobody there. Where on the kind of in June, July, um, a lot of companies were doing that and were asking people to sanitize their hands. So you're well, you always had somebody standing there as well, making sure that you didn't go in by or use the station or come back and use the station. And I know it's hard right, to uh, have somebody standing there maybe all the time at that, but something needs to be done because you're just there. So that's ridiculous. I mean, they're handling trolleys coming in. They don't know who is sick or maybe have it or contracted it. And then they're walking in the same going back out and just putting the trolley back and no wiping down. And mm. you're there. It's, all, it's not like you're paying for it. It's all free. No, that's it true, yeah. It's not costing you a washer to put it on your hands and to no. rub it on the, on the shopping trolley. Uh, but who do you blame here? Are you blaming the, the people 
uh, not doing it or the, the well, shops for, it, not, it, for not enforcing it? It's both. I mean, if I go in there now next weekend and I'll be doing the same and I'll be just calling over the manager and saying, you know, you'll have to start putting somebody back over there. What's the story? I said, because uh, that's what they do. You might as well not have stuff over there, Tosh. Um, and what have. answer did you get? Oh, no, I didn't uh, because I was in a hurry then because um, uh, I had to be somewhere. So the lad I was looking for wasn't there and I couldn't wait any longer. So I left, but I, I said, that's a grand. I'll be in there next week. It'll be the same next weekend in there because the last couple of weeks... Uh, and I've even seen it in shops that you go in or smaller shops and people, same thing. Mm. People are just walking in by and no using the stuff. They just walk in the door and you're there. Jesus, if you had to pay for it, you'd be giving out about it. No, well, that's true, but you don't have to pay for it. Um, yeah. uh, so there is no, uh, there's no reason. There's no reason but for seen, it. But I've seen people then walking in. I mean, masks are they not supposed to be mandatory. I wear the mask or if I bring one of the kids with me, they're wearing all the masks. And people are walking into shops, hardwares and stuff like this. No masks. Now, obviously some people don't have to wear masks uh, for medical reasons. You know, yeah. and, and there but are not quite... not that many. <laughs> not that many where you be in shops now uh, during the week, in and out. <laughs> you see that many people. You see, they can't be all on medical. All right, so you've noticed um, shops starting to let their guard down with regard oh, yeah. to sanitizers and all that. This, this week. This is over the last couple of weeks now. Mm, mm. So all right, Peter, thanks very much indeed. I'd love to hear from you. 67979981 is our telephone number. You can also uh, send me a WhatsApp voice note to 0877 98 98 98. This is your opportunity to tell us examples of where you have seen either companies or people, in fact, uh, letting their... Uh, letting their guard down. Um, just with regard to uh, hand sanitizer, this is Sarah. Hi, Adrian. Um, when I go into, say, a supermarket, I actually have my own hand sanitizer in my ha- in my pocket or my bag, easy to hand, and I use that for my own hands. I don't use the public one because it's a pump that you have to pump yourself now. Unless now, if I do happen to have a trolley and not have my own shopper, I do use the shop's one that they provide with tissue paper to wipe stuff down. So I wouldn't want anybody thinking that I'm not sanitizing my hands when I actually am. Just maybe keep that in mind for people out there that people might have their own personal hand sanitizer on them and they are using it. Thanks, bye. All right, thank you very much indeed, uh, Sarah. Six seven nine seven ninety eight one is our telephone number, or you can send us a WhatsApp voice note to oh eight seven seven ninety eight ninety eight ninety eight. Now, uh, Dermot, you're on ninety eight FM. How are you, Dermot? How are you doing? How's things? Now, tell me what you witnessed in a hotel. Yeah, we went on our staycation, wife and two kids last week, and they were really, really strict about the bar, and you know. Observing all the rules, yeah, that's grand. But the next morning, everyone seemed to arrive at the breakfast area for about 10 o'clock. And we counted 120 plus people in the dining room. Oh, really? Oh, right. <laughs> Absolutely. I just, I, and it was the same manager who was applying the strict rules the night before at the bar. And when you say there was 120, how big was the room? Like, were, were, there, were the tables well spaced out? Yeah, it was... Um, yeah, they were well spaced out in fairness to them, yeah, but it was like a big uh, wedding function room they had for the breakfast. And, OK, I mean, we heard all the, the murder over the last few days over Golfgate and the fact that 80 people were in a room. You're saying there was 120 people in this room? That's when we stopped counting, yeah. We, we just, it was just an observation we saw from the white man. Look, just count these people. He told us last night that he couldn't let any more than 30 into the bar at the one time. And yet when it and came it to the breakfast... Same, and it was the same area, the same sort of area where the bar was. There was 120 and we stopped counting. There were still people queuing to get in. And, uh, OK, so another way that they could have done business... And I assume there was no... Um, you weren't going up and getting your own food. It was brought to the table, was it? Uh, no, you, you, you had to queue and it was served... Like, it was buffet style, but it was served like... It was a half filled table. And, yeah, so you weren't, uh, picking, you weren't picking up the food. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, so that's one thing that they've had to do. That's to stop, um, you know, ten people in a row handling the same tongs or whatever to lift up your uh, yeah, your yeah, beans yeah. or whatever, yeah. Uh, so they were doing that, but there was... Uh, did you feel uncomfortable? I did. I felt like... Um, uh, it, was more, it was more paved that I couldn't get a point the night before. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and But you could have... Uh, the whole uh, The whole area could come in for breakfast. Yeah, everyone could come for breakfast, but we couldn't go in and have dinner the night before and and, uh, and a pint. 
I was more interested in the point, to be honest. But. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> um, right, okay. So they need to. Uh, well, you, you saw lacks of conditions where it came to breakfast in the hotel. Yeah, it was like a double standard, you know. It was the same manager observing the same rules, but he let his guard down in the morning. I, I don't know. It's just all crazy, isn't it? Yeah, in fact, somebody just texted in the exact same thing. Uh, I saw the exact same thing at breakfast in a hotel last week. You had to queue for the buffet to be served to you. Everyone squashed into the queue. Um, uh, wrongdoing, sorry, wrongdoing around the breakfast tables. I don't know what that means. But um, same thing, huge queue for breakfast in the hotel. Now, obviously, in most hotels... Everybody goes for breakfast at the same time. That's the problem that they have. Nobody's up at <laughs> half seven. Sorry? We all rush for the 10 o'clock deadline. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the point. Nobody gets up at half seven to have breakfast. Uh, everyone no, wants exactly. it at the same time. All right, Dermot, thanks very much indeed. Keep your messages coming in to us. 6797981 is our telephone number. Or you can send me a WhatsApp voice note to 0877 98 98 98. This isn't about squealing on businesses. This is just letting us know in what ways you've noticed things starting to relax a little bit uh, in terms of... Companies enforcing uh, COVID-19 protocols. We all know the sorts of things that they're meant to be doing. Some are doing it brilliantly still, but some uh, let their guard down a little bit. Let me go to uh, Laura. Now, don't name the supermarket, Laura, but tell me what you witnessed. Um, in doing my shopping the other night, and three people in the shop with no masks said it to the girl, and she said they stopped asking people because of the hassle they're getting. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's I a felt, that's a customer like, problem, isn't it? Well, yeah, but like I mean, somebody should be enforcing it within the shop. Yeah, you see, I know. I know an awful lot of shops have have spoken about this, and they don't believe it is their job to uh, enforce the law. Now, I know you could argue that they enforce the law. For example, if a sixteen-year-old comes in and tries to buy a bottle of vodka, they won't let him without ID and all of that. So they enforce that law. Yeah. But when it comes to the wearing of face masks, a lot of places don't believe it is their job to tell people to put on a mask. But there's not even security on the doors anymore now when you're going in. No, in a lot of places there isn't. I agree with you. And there was during yeah during the whole lockdown period. There was security in every supermarket, but yeah. that, that has definitely uh, stopped. Now, I know some of them have this traffic light system, which is quite good. Um, if it's red, you don't go in because they have too many people in there. You wait for the green light and in you go. So yeah. that's that's doing the job of a security guard, but the traffic light system doesn't know whether you're wearing a mask or not. That's terrible. That's, what, that's what's wrong, isn't it? There's nobody standing there enforcing it at the door, and there should be. Okay, so uh, when you asked, you were told, we're, we've gotten such grief over this, we're not bothering to enforce it. Yeah. Mm. And does, it, does it annoy you that people aren't doing it? Because we're actually going to be having a conversation about this protest that took place on Saturday from people saying they don't want to wear masks. Uh, and that was, you know, that was a lot of their protest. Does it annoy you when you see people not wearing them? Yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah. It does, because it's, you know, we want to try to get this stopped. We're not going to stop it by only half of us or some of us following the guidelines and others not. Yeah, OK. So when you see people... Uh, not wearing a mask, you you believe they're kind of giving you the two fingers. They're not playing yeah, ball. Well, they are, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's exactly what they're doing. All right, thanks very much indeed, Laura. Barry, tell me about breakfast. Well, it's not so much breakfast, but we were in a hotel there last week. I won't mention the hotel. Um, and we went in for dinner in the evening time, and the barman told us, you have an hour before dinner, you have your dinner, and then you have an hour after. Right. But if you go out to the lobby, you were serving you drink all night there out in the lobby. Oh, right. <laughs> so, oh. if you stayed in the restaurant part, they were kind of restricting your time. Yeah, you had your hour before, you had your meal, and then you had your hour after, and out you go. Right. Well, even without having dinner, you could sit out in the lobby and go into the bar, and I'll say, bring me a drink out all night. Really? We were still, get, still getting served drink at uh, 11 o'clock. And no insistence on food or anything like that? Nope, nope, now I have nope, to be nope. honest. I have to be honest. In I've been to a lot of places since they all reopened, uh, bars and restaurants and whatever. I've been to a fair few, and I can say I have not been moved out of one of them. Not one place has asked me to leave after 105 minutes, or even after two hours or three hours. Nowhere has asked me to leave. I don't no, know if it's happened to you. The, the same manager that telling us we had an hour before and an hour after was the one that was actually 
we'd go into him and he was serving us a drink down for the rest of my day. <laughs> it's ridiculous really, isn't it? In in company of what there was fifteen adults down there and no problem at all. And you all sat around in a big group. Um, now, obviously, people who know each other and all of that, but... Yeah, OK, thanks very much indeed, Barry. 67977981, keep them coming in. Um, here is a WhatsApp voice note that has just come in to me this very second from Rachel. Hi, Adrian. Um, I work in a hotel, and what we're doing is we are actually taking pre-booking times for breakfast, so we're calling our guests the day before they arrive, asking them to pre-book for breakfast, and that way we can space out people, and we only allow maybe six to eight people per time slot, which is every 15 minutes, just to space out when they're coming down for breakfast. Um, And we have had to say to people they can't book in for a certain time because it's full, or that they mightn't get served. Uh, They might have to wait a while until the restaurant is emptier if they don't to pre-book their breakfast time. So hotels are doing things to, um, to you know, work around the guidelines and to try and adhere to the guidelines. All right, uh, Rachel, thanks very much indeed. And I do know that some places are doing it properly. I was in a hotel in Carlo uh, two weeks ago and they were doing uh, everything perfectly, to be honest with you, um, in- including breakfast. And people were asked to book their breakfast before they uh, came down for their breakfast. Um, where am I going now? Uh, Paul, tell me what happened this morning. Yeah, good morning, Adrian. Good morning, so, Paul. Basically, this morning, what I w- witnessed is um, basically three doctors having a chat together, two doctors wearing a mask, and one doctor not wearing a mask. Um, now, one of them, in fairness, had got a cup of tea in their hand, but the issue with that is it wasn't in a restaurant setting. It was in a reception setting. So if you have two doctors there who are wearing the mask, the one who obviously isn't wearing the mask is um, basically compromising the other two doctors who are going to physically walk up onto a ward. Right. So, that's a bit worrying. Well, do you know what? It is, it is worrying, but that's from the same point. The, the government's rules is that you don't have to wear the mask if you're eating or drinking. But in that type of a setting, eating, and, and although the person was drinking, it compromises two people who are going to be physically working with patients whether they've COVID or not, but it does compromise their scenario. Mm. So I don't think the government's probably the government realistically hasn't done enough in terms of its advertisement campaign as to the reasons why people have to wear the mask. You know, if you just tell people you have to wear a the mask, then have we not go, have okay. we not all been told to wear a mask to stop the spread? So you you could have COVID nineteen and not even realise it, um, and if you're wearing a mask, it stops you spreading it to other people. What we what we're, well what they've done there in terms of the advertisement for that is we've got that from the six o'clock news when they're giving the COVID numbers and Dr Tony Glenn there would say, you know the masks are mandatory etc. But what part it doesn't get to is it doesn't get to any of the younger generation because the younger generation don't watch the six o'clock news. No, that's very, that's a very good point actually. That's a fair point and it is something that so, has been talked about about how the message is being. Uh, spread around, and you're right. They're they're not watching the six one news. They're not watching the Department of Health press conference and all of that. Where no, of course they're not. And yeah. We don't see any advertisements in the city centre. Like I'm, I'm in the city centre currently at the moment, and I'm driving down the keys, and I won't see one advertisement for people to wear a mask. Not one sign. Unless you're but walking yeah. into a supermarket, they most likely have a sign at the front door. They have a sign at the front door, which would be relatively small. But if you want to get a uh, an impression across to all generations from young to uh, to old we should have advertisements on bus stations, on buses, on the back of taxis, wherever they need to be mm. to say, to highlight the reason why you have to wear the mask. Because then it becomes subconsciously drilled into the person's mind as such. Yeah, no, uh, I, I get I get that point and, and it's a very well made point as well Paul, uh, that the messaging needs to be done in a different way that people, and like you said, there's billboards all around town and you don't see any signs up on them uh, in very few cases. Alright Paul, thanks very much indeed. Rita, I'll take your call in a second and we'll take a couple more on 67979781 or send me a WhatsApp voice note to 0877 98 98 98. We're talking about uh, ways in which you have seen things relaxing a little bit in terms of companies and hotels and restaurants and supermarkets not overly enforcing the COVID-19 guidelines anymore. Now, a lot of places still are, but I'd love to hear your stories of lapses. We're back in just a sec. 
Daily COVID-19 discussion and information. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Now we're talking about lapses in uh, COVID protocols over the last couple of weeks. At the very start when companies opened, they were all gung-ho, they were flying along, they were doing everything that they were asked to do. But we've noticed, and people are, uh, a lot of our listeners have noticed, different lapses. Derek sent me this message. Hi Adrian, uh, I've been to a few places up in Kildare and uh, we actually on every time were told to leave that the table had to be sanitised for the next uh, party that was coming in and they all closed at half ten. Now I've been down to Dublin and it's a free for all. I've been in a hotel where you don't have to order food, you go to the bar, uh, no social distancing, the table are the same as they were before the lockdown and it's, it's packed and it's just free for all. It's ridiculous. And Kildare's locked down and Dublin's not. It's I don't I don't understand that. Thanks. All right, Derek, thank you. Rita, what have you noticed? I noticed, Adrian, that in some places while there's a hand sanitizer unit that there's not always hand sanitizer in it. Ha ha I, 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 the exact same thing happened to me on Friday afternoon in a supermarket, walking in the door, walk straight over like a good boy to the hand sanitizer, nothing in it. And yeah. uh, I asked the uh, one of the staff at the, and she said, "Oh, we've run out. We, we'll have it in about two hours." <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I wouldn't mind, but this is a shop that actually sells it, and they oh, had no. bottles of it, but they didn't have it in their dispenser. So, yeah. Okay, so you've noticed more and more places where the sanitizer is wasted, basically. Yeah, and I've also seen where they have state-of-the-art units where you press a pedal and it's yep. that presses, but there's nothing in that either. Yeah, no, I've, 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 well, I've seen it once anyway. I saw it on Friday where, and the girl was said to me, well, more or less, like, come back in two hours and you can sanitise your hands, which is yeah, isn't yeah. Much use no, I bring my own, so I, I don't worry too much about me, but other people may not carry theirs. Yeah, no, and I, then, I, and I was carrying my own, and then I leave it in one jacket and I put on a different jacket, and then I don't have it, and so. so a woman can keep it in her handbag. I don't walk around with a handbag, though. I know, I know. Yeah. On, what was but even in the pet, in, uh, petrol station, it's not visible there. So it's only when you're on the queue and you hear the, the over the intercom, don't forget to sanitise your hands. It's over near the ATM. But you don't look that way when you're going into the petrol station. You always just head for the cash point. Yeah, that's true. So I find that you do your hands on the way out, but really you should have been doing them on the way in. Mm. Yeah, no, you're you're dead right. Thank you very much, Rita. Kemi, you're on 98 FM. Hiya, Kemi. Hi, Adrian. Now, your point is that, um, and I agree with you for an awful lot of companies, that uh, businesses are actually doing a, a, a generally very good job. Yeah. Yeah, I know in the peak of the pandemic, the lockdown, you security guards at the door and all that, but at the end of the day, if we don't adhere to wearing masks and shops have to bring in more security guards, we're going to pay for it one way or the other. Mm. Prices are also going to go up. That's you true. Know, yeah, no, yeah, that is yeah. true. Yeah, it's just for people to be responsible. Yeah, I've gone into shops. Yeah, I've seen people without masks. You know, but um, I can't imagine. I wouldn't want to be a shopkeeper and telling someone, you have to wear a mask. If you don't wear a mask, you won't come in. Some customers can be quite aggressive. I, yeah. I have to be honest. If I ran a, a shop, I would have a sign at the door asking people to put on the mask, but I'm not going to get into a row with somebody over Absolutely. No. And I was saying that the other day with few people having a chat. I said, I would have signs everywhere. Yeah. Sanitizers everywhere. But I would not stop. No. I, 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 mask, you know, have the full PPE or whatever. But I will not stop any customer. No, I don't, I don't think I would either. And, and being honest about that, because... All you can do is put the signs up, have the sanitizer, and then it's people deciding for themselves, I suppose. But yes, you're right. A lot of companies are doing exactly the right thing. Uh, this is from Brian. I was at a well-known restaurant in Temple Bar on Saturday, and we had to leave our table after 105 minutes. But then we were just able to go to a well-known, busy pub around the corner from it. And we were getting sore points all night for four or five hours, I'd say, we were there. And we didn't have to get food or anything. Your one just left menus in front of us. Yeah, and that's what a lot of places are doing. And uh, let me just squeeze in one more. This 
is from Darren. Morning, guys. I'm just a bit peed off, to be honest with you. Listening about hotels and pubs, sanitising tables and getting it all ready for the next bunch of people. Long before coronavirus came in, they should have been doing that anyway because you don't know who sat on the table before you. Kids probably snotting all over the place, picking their noses, hands on the table people spit on the table in conversation they should have been doing all those kind of parameters years ago not just of COVID-19 it's ridiculous yeah you're probably right Darren I agree with you um, and I mean some places you, you they just use a wet cloth to clean the table and you know it's not even using any detergent or anything to clean the table anyway thanks very much indeed for your messages now that conversation leads me very nicely into our uh, next conversation and um our next conversation um, is a topic about whether or not it's right for the government to enforce laws on the wearing of face masks. And most people uh, realise the benefits of wearing it, as you've been hearing. Uh, however, a very large group of people don't. And they gathered in the city centre on Saturday afternoon to protest against um, the wearing of masks and the lockdowns and vaccines and you name it, they were protesting about it. I got a message uh, from a guy who's a regular listener to this programme and he is a frontline worker and his name is Mark. I want you to have a listen to this message, please. Uh, hi, Jeremy there. Uh, Mark here. I'm just giving you a ring regarding the videos there of the, the protest at the weekend there. Um, it just beggars belief how these people cannot get through their thick heads of the pressure they're putting on the health service. You know, so no social distancing, no masks, all to prove a point. I mean, are they in a different planet? Are they, are they living in a different world? There's people getting sick and could actually die because of this. And the pressure they're putting on the health service coming into the winter season and with the schools going back, it just does beg a belief. Um, you know, it just, I, I, I'm lost for words. And how the guards can let this happen? You know, what's going on at the moment with the TDs in Galway? Now we have these protests. And we're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, have people given up hope now of, of, of um, trying to contain this? And they just think that, oh, that's it, we're okay. Let's go out and just do our own thing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just lost for words. Uh, great show, guys. Cheers. All right, Mark. Thank you very much indeed. So, Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock, uh, a demonstration organised by Health Freedom Ireland, never heard of them, uh, supported by Yellow Vest Ireland, uh, kicked off at 2 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Um, and, by the way, we've invited the organisers onto the show and um, we've met brick walls so far. Anyhow, uh, if you were at this protest on Saturday, we're inviting you on to explain to us why you were there. What uh, were you trying to protest against? That's really what I really want to understand. We're told it's kind of an anti-mask, anti-lockdown uh, protest, which the lockdown is is over, um, largely. We do have some restrictions still. Uh, Kildare is still... Uh, and it's not locked down as we were back in uh, April, but um, movement has been somewhat restricted in Kildare as well. However, I want to find out, if you were at this protest on Saturday... What were you protesting about? A large uh, guard of presence was reported in the city centre. Four people uh, arrested after scuffles. Um, so here's some of the signs that were displayed uh, at the um, protest over the weekend on Saturday. And uh, by the way, uh, some newspapers reported a couple of hundred people. I've looked at videos from it. There were far more than a couple of hundred people. Uh, well over a thousand. I would estimate perhaps even up to two thousand. That's just from looking at videos. But it certainly wasn't just a couple of hundred. It was a big protest. Uh, some of the signs displayed at the protest included freedom and choice. Let's reclaim our health. Uh, no to new world order. Yeah, OK. And uh, then another one was uh, no to their new normal. And there were other ones. I noticed um, justice for the elderly. Fear promotes fear. Think for yourself. Social distancing is damaging to mental and emotional health. And one more I spotted in the crowd was no to masks, no to social distancing, no to COVID testing and no to COVID vaccine. They were just some of the... Um, uh, banners and whatever um, 
Uh, we know, for example, uh, Jim Corr was there over the weekend, and we know uh, Jedward had a go at him as well. And we did invite him on, but uh, he hasn't um, made himself available. We have uh, reached out to him. If you were there at this protest on Saturday, I want to understand what you're objecting to. What is the problem? Okay, we've been speaking for the last uh, half hour about the sorts of protocols that are in place to protect you, to protect me, to protect Granny, to protect all of us. Um, And, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Let's have a listen, firstly, to a WhatsApp voice note from Sarah. I'm so sick of all the conspiracy theorists going on all the time about um, that the government are just doing this to try and control us, that the calling it coronavirus, saying that um, it's not real, the virus isn't real, it's just something for the government to control us, that they wouldn't take the vaccine because um, of all the stuff they're putting in it. They're just trying to um, control population control. They're talking about Bill Gates. It's just so scary, like, because... Uh, my brother-in-law was was trying to convince me of all these things and it actually does make you think about it well obviously I still follow the rules and everything but like there's people that just won't wear masks like these protests are ridiculous will you just cop on cop on and just do what we're asked and, and let us get it over with Okay, now there have been protests like this over the last couple of months and in um, previous cases there was 50 people at it or 100 people at it outside uh, Leinster House. The one on Saturday was much bigger and I uh, saw uh, a crowd that, well, like I said, various different things people were trying to get across. Let's just have a listen, actually. I don't know who the speaker is in this. I I, I can hazard a guess, but I don't know specifically. Uh, This is a little bit of a speech. um, um, This is from the Irish Independent website. Uh, Have a listen to this. This is just part of what was said in the speeches on Saturday. Why should healthy people be by law mandated to wear a mask when there is not one shred of evidence to substantiate the fact that healthy people and people who are asymptomatic, which means people who have no symptoms, spread any COVID-19 virus. Why is our government ignoring the real science here? It's because the rules are being driven by politics, not real science. Okay, there you go. Uh, That's just an excerpt from uh, one of the speeches by um, an unknown individual. Like I said, I can hazard a guess as to who that was speaking, but I don't know for a fact because from the video I couldn't see uh, who the speaker was. Now, Joe, you support protests like this. Hi there. First of all, thanks for having me. Yeah, I completely support anybody's right. I think when you are unhappy with what your government is telling you, it is your fundamental right, whatever is going on in the world, to take to the streets and to protest. Which is exactly what they did on Saturday um, uh, here in Dublin. And you sound, it sounds like you're in the U- In fact, you are in the UK. Is that right? I am indeed, yeah. I did live in Ireland and work in Ireland for many years, but I'm currently based in the UK. I have attended all of the London Hyde Park protests as well, so I'm pretty which are very of a lot of Okay, which are on. very similar uh, protests. So what, when you attend one of these protests, Joe, what are you going for? Uh, look, I think it's important to say that a lot of, uh, you know, one of the tactics that people take to try and rubbish these kind of things is they're very often, they want to credit it to the far right or say this is some kind of like, you know, a horrible protest where people don't care about grandma, don't care about granddad. That's not the case at all at any of the protests that I've been to. These protests are literally simply made up of people who are sick of not being able to trust the government and, belie- and, and media. Honestly, I have a belief that it's our responsibility, not just to ourselves, but also to our children, to question why so many people around the world are indeed questioning this. Okay, questioning what? What questions do you want answered that aren't being answered? Firstly, I think the big one for a lot of people is why do you turn in mask science 
Why were organisations like the World Health Organisation telling us just three months ago that masks, that masks actually serve no purpose in the fight against COVID-19 and actually not to buy masks? And all of a sudden now we're being told to wear masks and that regular healthy people should cover their faces. OK, my understanding, now I, I stand to be corrected on this, my understanding is at the start of this pandemic, um, the health authorities didn't want to recommend the wearing of face coverings because there was a shortage of them and they were afraid that our frontline workers wouldn't be able to get their hands on them because Joe Public was wearing them. Now, that um, lack of PPE and face masks is gone now. You can get them anywhere. So it's not as big an issue now in terms of supply. Does that not make any sense? I think that people would have accepted that if it hadn't have been for all the videos and the online stuff that had gone around about empty hospitals, to be honest with you. Okay, so uh, the wearing of masks and the, what, dubious scientific reasoning behind it? A hundred percent. And again, another thing that people like to say all the time is, oh, this can't be a worldwide conspiracy. Why aren't more doctors, why aren't more nurses coming out and speaking out about this? I think that if you actually, you know, turn off the mainstream media and go to independent media, you'll find that there are loads of doctors and nurses speaking out against this. In fact, the only doctors and nurses really that aren't speaking out against this, I believe, and again, this is just my personal opinion, are the ones that are afraid to lose their jobs. Well, that's a reasonable fear. Is it I understand that, and I totally understand that. You know, I, again, you know, you, you can never say from somebody else's opinion. I totally understand, because at the end of the day, all we're hearing is fear, fear, fear. You know, uh, the CDC released a report last month saying that up to 89% of people that had died of the coronavirus in the U.S., you know, that, that they might, you know, they probably would have died anyway. The remaining 11%, they couldn't actually even tell us in the report whether they died of flu, whether they died of pneumonia, whether they died of the common cold, which all, by the way, have actually ended more people's lives since the lockdown began than corona itself. OK, but we we do ha- have a situation where, if, uh, if I look at the UK, uh, 41,500 people are registered as having died with COVID-19. Here in Ireland, 1,777 people um, out of 27,000 who've got it have died. That's a lot of people. The truth, uh, the truth is, as I said, I'm currently based in the UK, so I can't speak for the Irish number, but I know that the, the UK have actually reduced their number twice, and the number actually now stands at 20% less than they said it did in the first place. If we can't trust you on 20, 20% of deaths, that's about five or 6,000 people, I think, that they've knocked off. If, you, if five or 6,000 deaths, you know, if we can't trust you about that, what else can we trust you about, you know? Okay, and, uh, right, and uh, I'm trying to understand uh, all of this. Uh, do me a favour, Joe, and stay on the line there for one second, uh, because I have oh, to take yeah. a quick break, and Ruth, I'll take your call in a second as well, and I'd love to hear from you on 67979811. I've always believed in freedom of speech. I genuinely have. There's nobody pulling my strings here uh, for what I can say or what I can't say, and I believe in letting people uh, speak their mind when it comes to a protest like this. I wasn't at the protest. I've just seen videos of it. I want to understand why people were there. What are you protesting about? We'll take a quick break. We're back in a sec. Up to date coronavirus discussion for Dublin. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. Hi, so my biggest issue about the protest on Saturday was that a local GP from my town attended. Not only did he attend mass gathering with no social distancing and no face masks, he also went on to post on Twitter about his hands been sore from shaking so many people's hands. If hand washing alone was enough, this virus wouldn't be spreading at the rate it is. Okay, that's a little bit concerning, all right. Um, uh, where am I going? Sorry, I, I just want to read a message actually from a, a good friend of ours here at the radio station, a good friend of people in radio generally. And it's a man who is living with a health condition. There's no need to name him. But here's what he put on social media on uh, Saturday, along with a photograph of himself with uh, an oxygen feed uh, up his nose. And the message says, A message to anti-mask protesters in Dublin yesterday. I have a serious illness. This is how I spend hours of my week receiving treatment. I've been told by doctors to avoid catching COVID-19. When I'm not in a clinic, I wear a mask to protect myself against idiots like you. 
And as I said, that's from uh, from somebody whose name you would know. You may have seen uh, his post on social media over the weekend. Uh, who, as I said, is, is undergoing treatment for a particular medical condition, has been warned by his doctors to do his utmost to uh, prevent himself getting COVID-19. Brian is very angry Good morning, Adrian and Jeremy. Uh, I just wanted to say... Um, my mother is in the hospital at the minute. We haven't seen her in two or three weeks now. Um, she's going to be in for another eight to ten weeks. We we're not sure yet. And it's because of people like them bloody gobshites who would protest the drop of a hat. Uh, and the reason why we can't get in to see her, my mother, you know, it's just disgraceful. They've got nothing better to be doing than going protesting on the streets for nothing. They need to get a, get a life. These are people who have been in lockdown probably and just want to get out for a few hours, a few hours laugh, you know. They'll be the ones, that we, when you see the case numbers now going to increase over the next couple of days again because of these absolute gobshites. Get a life. They have to actually just get a life. Not Jim Corfella. Oh, don't even get me started. Go on. <laughs> Thanks, Good luck, Brian. Thank you. Ruth, you're on 98 FM. Hi, Ruth. Hi, yeah. Uh, how are now, you? Now, Ruth, what did you want to say on this? Yeah, um, you know, I do genuinely feel sorry for that man who has that condition. Um, and who is genuinely vulnerable and needs to protect himself. Which he is doing, um, which he is doing. Yeah, yeah, and that's good. And um, so people like that definitely need to look out for themselves. Um, however, I don't believe that the majority of the population should be forced to wear a mask when this is not of astronomical proportions where thousands are dying every day, like you had with the Spanish flu in 1918. I don't know the exact numbers, but I know it was a terrible amount of people that it died. There was 25 that. million people died uh, at that time. Uh, however, yeah. we still have fairly startling figures. 812,000 people around the world, nearly 813,000 have died from this. Yeah, but that's if you can trust those figures. Nobody trusts those figures anymore because um, COVID deaths were written down for people who came in when they had a heart attack and they were tested for COVID and that was put down as a death. They also put down um, if people were tested multiple times, one person was tested multiple times, each positive test was counted as a case. Um, people have been counted as a case when they don't even have symptoms. So, okay, but, but, yeah. but hang on for I understand the uh, concern that some people have about their belief that figures are being manipulated. But yeah. on, on two occasions in the last uh, three weeks, I've spoken to people on this programme who survived COVID-19. Uh, both people that I spoke to in their 30s, fit as fiddles, um, uh, really well able for, uh, you know, th- like, for example, the guy I spoke to last week, he was cycling 20 or 30 kilometres a day. And uh, ever since COVID-19, he can barely cycle two kilometres without being winded. And yeah. these are but fit, you know what? healthy you know what? people. people- People were neglected. I know somebody who was affected by COVID-19. He was completely neglected. I was begging his wife to bring him down to the hospital. And she said to him, she said to me, no, I can't do that. They have instructed me not to bring him in. And it was only when he was at death's door on day 11, she had to rush him down to A&E and they took him in. And I, you know, this is what really angers me, that if that man had been taken in sooner and looked after he wouldn't have been in the condition he was okay, in. Okay, but let me just play a little bit of uh, what that guy said on the show just last week. This is a guy who survived COVID-19. You contracted COVID-19 back in April. Yeah, it was brutal. It came on as a head cold. The aches and pains and you couldn't really take deep breaths even, you know. I'm still affected by it today. Like, I do a bit of cycling, you know, like I used to stop after 7 or 8K, but now I'm finding myself stopping after nearly 2 or 4K. And it genuinely feels like there's a person standing on your chest at, at all times. What would you say to people who, who aren't taking it seriously enough? Cop on, basically. Cop on. Um, and that's a guy who... Uh, got over it, Ruth, but he's still feeling the effects. So the point, I'm, the point he was making is, yes. this is serious. Okay, yes, maybe, yes, 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 it is maybe serious. some pneumonia, of the people. Pneumonia is serious, isn't it? Yes. Pneumonia is serious. I have a friend. So wouldn't you do anything in your power to prevent yourself getting pneumonia? Okay, so let's. You know, pneumonia is going around in the world, and it's, it will always be here. Should we keep the world on lockdown forever? You know, one of my friends who is extremely healthy. Um, a very healthy nurse, always out hiking and swimming and doing things. She came down with pneumonia a few years ago. Thankfully, they caught her. She was fine. We know lots of people who catch pneumonia and flu. You know, people die of the flu and pneumonia every yeah, single year. I'm aware year. of that. I'm aware of that. 
Yeah, so, like, this is not a pandemic. This is, of course we want to help people. I will do anything to help my family and, you know, my friends and relatives. That's why I was begging my friend to take him down to the hospital and she wasn't allowed. This is not about being cruel to other people. You know, this is like, we need the proper facts here. We need to know what is really going on. This is not of pandemic status. Uh, What do you believe is going on then, Ruth? I honestly don't know, but I do believe there's a lot of corruption. Um, and I would say it's, a, a lot of it is coming from the pharmaceutical companies um, through World Health Organization. So this and is a, what this they're is, instructing other countries to do. This and is a, also, a whole big new world order master plan, is it? I don't know about that, to be quite honest. I don't know about the new world order master plan. I, I haven't really looked into a whole lot of that. I do know, yes, people do believe that this is all heading towards us. You know, that this cash... Okay, so what would you... And, uh, well, we, what would you like to see being done? Would you like to see all restrictions lifted and life returned to normal and 80,000 people crammed into Crow Park for an All-Ireland final? OK, yeah, because you yeah. know what? There's not one death of, of COVID at the moment. In, in Northern Ireland, at least, there's not one. Well, there was two here uh, in Dublin yesterday. Well, that's, uh, in if can, that's if you can trust those figures. And not okay, do, that, me, do me a favour, Ruth. I have to take a quick break, but I'll come straight back to you after the break. And uh, John and Lisa, I'll take your calls as well. We're back in just a moment. It's 11 o'clock across Dublin. Good morning. This is Adrian Kennedy. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talks. And this is Laura with Monday's Top Headlines. Thanks, Adrian. Good morning. The elderly woman killed in an assault in Clontarf has been described as a lovely lady. The body of the pensioner who was in her 80s was found at her home in Kinkora Court last night. A man in his 60s was arrested at the scene. A teenage boy has been killed in a crash in North Dublin. The 17-year-old died when his motorbike collided with a bus at St Margaret's in Finglas just before 8 o'clock last night. A government minister has called on Phil Hogan to resign following the controversy over the Galway Golf Dinner. Dara O'Brien says the European Trade Commissioner is the only one refusing to take responsibility for attending the event, which broke public health rules. And Matt Damon will return to Dublin later this month to resume filming for The Last Duel. The actor spent lockdown living in Dalkey when filming for the movie was put on hold due to COVID-19. And now you're up to date on 98. 98 FM Dublin Talks Call 67979981 A huge reaction to what we're talking about and that is the protest that took place on Saturday afternoon uh, in the city centre described as an anti-mask and anti-lockdown protest As I said, we have invited the organisers uh, to join us on the programme They know we're talking about it In fact, they're debating our show on a Facebook page as we speak Not our one, a different one But uh, you're welcome to join us uh, this is a WhatsApp voice note from Tommy. I've seen the pictures of people at that protest and I can guarantee, I'd say, well more than half of them were happily receiving that COVID payment while they sat in their arse and did nothing. And then they're just being a bunch of bold children just standing out there making a mug of the whole country. And for, they might, they may have not lost people, but people have. Personally, I haven't. But these are just a bunch of children who don't like being told what to do. And it's only a temporary thing. Please, God. Okay, and by contrast, Darren sent me this message. How are you, Adrian? People are just totally fed up of all this. We're being told what to do and the advice to follow by the government while they blatantly disregard it and go do their own thing. Just look at Golfgate. Cheers, Darren. Okay, there was one or two uh, TDs. uh, One minister, in fact. Uh, And this is from Michael. Look, if we have to choose which side to be on between Jim Carr and Jedward, and the right answer is Jedward. Something terribly wrong with this country. Okay. (laughs) Have a good day. Thank you, Michael. He's got a good point. Uh, John, you're on 98 FM. How are you, John? Adrian, how are you? I'm good, thank you, John. John, you've been hearing from people who support protests like this. You heard from a guy who takes part in them in London all the time. What's your opinion on all this? I, uh, I am just fed up and sick to death of people left-wing nutjobs that uh, think that, you know, snowflake generation, basically, that think they're above everything. Like, what are they going to say to the people of, you know, nurses that have died? What are they going to say to the family of, of doctors that have died? 
of my family that members have died. What are they going to say to the, the, the other hospital nurses and all that people that stayed up for days on end trying to care for people? And then you have these nut jobs standing like in Dublin, thinking they're above everyone else. Have they lost anyone? No, they haven't. Have they seen the numbers? This whole conspiracy theory about government doing this and government doing that, the government have made a lot of mistakes. Don't get me wrong. The government made plenty of mistakes. The golfing incident was one of them. Not shutting well, the then, In fairness, that was nothing to do with the government per se. No, but no, 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 but no, no, no. There's a point to this, what I'm making. The government got a lot of stick out of this. The only reason why we haven't seen close to 100,000 deaths is because of lockdown. And they had to open up. From the economy point of view, they had to open up. Hmm. But all people have to do is wash your hands and wear masks. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do anything. Okay, but, but as, as I said, yeah. some of the banners on Saturday, freedom and choice, let's reclaim our health, uh, no to their new normal. What else do they say, some of the banners? Uh, social distancing is damaging to mental and emotional health, um, right. was another banner. Yeah. This is arguably the biggest event in prob- in the world, r- probably since the Second World War. And as a nation, we have to stand together and 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 and, and fight not not for the for the, the people who are healthy, the people that are sick, and just do what we're told for once. But no, if that that and apologies because uh, I don't know that lady that came on before. But what a bag of contradictions! Okay, let I mean, me ask you then. Uh, uh, yeah. What is your opinion on the? And I estimate. Uh, Somewhere between one and 2,000 people who joined that protest on Saturday. What do you think of those people? I think that... Uh, I, just, I just think, number one, they, they're, they're callous. I think they're cold-hearted. I think that they're pretty much brain-dead, in fact. Um, and I mean, these, like, saying... Uh, I mean, oh, this is a government conspiracy and all oh, this, you know, statistic this and statistic that. Bullshit. I mean, actually, sorry for cursing on, on uh, this hour of the day. But look at the stats. You know, look, look at interviews with do- actual interviews with doctors. Go to Beaumont Hospital. Go to all these places that were inundated with space. But okay, stay, stay there for one second, John, because I have another John on the other line um, who was at the protest on Saturday. Um, John, good morning to you. Good morning, Adrian. John, callous, cold hearted, and brain dead is what the other John just described people like you as. What do you say to that? Well, look, okay, that's, 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 that's a clear definition. That's, that's his, uh, what he thinks of what he's obviously clearly brainwashed in the team at the bus. But the curious thing about it, Adrian, nobody knows what's really going on with this COVID, right? But what we do know is we're being lied to. With the numbers are being manipulated, we do know that for a fact. Our own T-Shocks have said that. Now, let's... Well, let, let, well, let, well, sorry, you said what? What? I said that he got... Uh, our own T-shirt. I'm not sorry, not T-shirt. What Leo? Leo said, "Not surprised we got the numbers wrong." Well, you're not. We got the numbers wrong, and our whole economy is shut down. And it's just like that. We got the numbers wrong. Is that normal? Is is, is that okay? Okay. But, uh, do you? When you were there on Saturday, yes. What are you protesting about? What What I made you head into town on Saturday afternoon? Against so many different things, right? So first of all, we, 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 let's let's weigh up the cons of the lockdown, right? How many people have got, have fallen into depression? How many? What about people going into addiction? What about people losing their careers? What about people? The suicide rates gone up. Uh, domestic abuse gone up. Kids starving gone up. Mental health gone up. The cons of, of this lockdown way most seriously outweigh the, the pros of, of locking down. It's disgraceful. It is. Okay. It now. No sense. Okay. Fine. Now, do you not think the government n- know that and knew? The potential implications of uh, the lockdown on the economy, on on people's mental health, and everything else. Do you not think they knew that when they were doing it? Do you, well, in other words, what I'm getting at is, do you think they did this as a punishment for us? I think you've done that as well. As a punishment, like why do you think? In, in other words, the reason that the country was locked down uh, back in, at the end of March was yeah. to stop this virus spreading. And guess what? It worked. It stopped okay. the virus spreading. Okay, but you said it was for two weeks to flatten the curve, and here we are five and a half months later, Adrian. Well, we're not in, he's still in lockdown now, um, John. Adrian, well, 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 we're being pushed back into lockdown at fourth mass. Here's something. Now, you, you can't disagree with this. Even you can't disagree with this, right? So, this, this, this is what doesn't make sense. The healthy have to wear masks, but if you're sick, you don't have to wear the mask. Does that make any sense at all, does it? 
it, it, if you're sick with a breathing issue, you don't have to wear a mask. And if you suffer a stress, many underlying illnesses. And when you have an underlying illness, it's the time you should be wearing masks. But instead, they're making the healthy wear a mask, and the sick don't have to wear a mask. That doesn't make that, sense, Adrian. Why do you? Why have we been asked to wear masks? Why are we being masked? Yeah. It's, it's draconian. It's draconian. No, no, no. Like, uh, answer the question. What do you think is the reason behind it? It doesn't make sense to see see how much he can push us. It's about control here. It's all about control. See how much he can see us compliant and see how much he can push us. Look at Sweden. Just, uh, uh, but hey, hey, okay, John, let me ask you another question. Go on. Do you, uh, uh, do you drive a car? Oh, I do drive a car, yes. Do you put your seatbelt on? Oh, I put my seatbelt on, yes. Why? Just so for safety in case I crash. Yeah, but you're being told to do that. That was made law. Years ago, you yeah. didn't have to do that. But that's safety. Okay, okay. But look at here's the thing about it, Adrian. What about what? What, what does wearing a mask constantly deal for? Well, does, it has that any effects? Because there's no there's no professional study to say that's good for it. The re- you have- uh, okay, but the reason behind the masks is to prevent people who may not even realise that they have this virus from spreading it to other people. That's the motivation behind it. That's what it's all so- about. So, so the most deadly virus in the world that has the world locked down. You need to be tested. You don't even know you have it. Wow. So that's 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 look at. Okay, I I I could ha- have it. I could have had it and not but know about it. Uh, well, and uh, yeah, but the risk is that you pass it on to your granny or you pass it on to somebody who's medically vulnerable and they get I, so chronically sick that they die. But I, but I, I, I couldn't agree with you anymore. So let's let's everybody wear masks and open the whole country back up then. Why don't we do that? Isn't that, what, isn't that what is being attempted at the moment? No, it's not, because they're still on lockdown, agent. You can't even go to a bar. We're still on lockdown. Like, look, at, listen, you, you allow six people in your house or, or these functions, madness, like, if you have, if you have a skill bag, you allow 30 in the class. If you have, if you have 40 people, if you, if you have, ma- if you go to mass, if you have a wedding, you allow 50 people. Like, it doesn't make sense. I, know, and I do understand, I, I understand all of those contradictions, uh, John, uh, but what I'm trying to get my head around uh, is some people who are at this protest believe this is all part of some master plan, this new world order master plan. You're talking about control. Who is sitting down in a room and saying, I want to control the population of Ireland? Or the, the, the elites, the, you're, we're controlled by the European Union. We have no say anymore. We we don't get a say anymore. We 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 we're, we're sold out a long time, Adrian. You know we're sold out, and that's where that's where, that's where our laws are coming from. The European Union. Where we're sold out. Well, long time. where it comes to COVID nineteen, it's not. Ireland has done its own thing. Where it comes to that. No, it's not. We're, we follow we we follow the World Health Organization legislation, which we know is corrupt. As, like on a course, but it's, Here, <laughs> John, they uh, they probably know a bit more than you and I know. Well, duty, duty, because you keep changing the story. We're we're supposed to be listening to the professionals, but yet the professionals. Are you are, are you wrong. a doctor? I'm not a doctor, but I have common sense. And I can read or I can tell when somebody's trying to make it, when somebody's trying to pull the wall out of me. We're getting told this, and they're constantly contradicting themselves. So how can they be key? How can they keep getting it wrong, Adrian? Okay, let me let me play a message for you that's come in to me from a lady called Caitlin. I want you to stay there for a second, John, and I want you to have a listen to this. Hi, guys. Sorry I can't come on air. I'm in work. But um, everybody talking about these protests and all going on, first of all, they're absolutely ridiculous. Like, my grandmother, she lives very close to it and it was basically on her doorstep there on Saturday uh, afternoon. Like, she needed to go over to O'Connell Street to collect her pension. She was that terrified to do it, to walk through these people rioting and fighting and letting off bangers and everything else and roaring and screaming that I had to go with her. Like, there's a lot of elderly people that live around there that the protests were literally on their doorstep and these people are the most vulnerable to this virus more than a lot of us and like to have it outside their door first of all is disrespectful but it's very intimidating like they didn't know if these people that were at this riot causing murder and causing havoc were going to maybe come back towards the houses and do anything else or it's just it's an absolute joke people need to cop on that's not fair on that uh, elderly lady john is it most certainly not, Adrian, most certainly not. But that's, that's, many people in this country, many people have just happened to across the world. So what, what do we have to do? We just stop because of that one person, Adrian. We're, at the end of the day... Okay, well, uh, sorry, uh, one of the things that people get very annoyed about with, with the likes of this protest on Saturday, John, which you were at, right. is yeah. 
that it feels like you and the people at that protest are giving the two fingers to the elderly people who died, are giving the two fingers to the nursing staff and doctors that had to deal with this day in and day out for, uh, during March, April and May, and giving two fingers to the rest of us that are prepared to go along with the guidelines we've been asked to go along with. OK, but you know what? It couldn't be any further from the truth because what we're actually doing is in there marching for everybody's freedoms, which are being slowly stripped away. And little do they know that's what we're doing. Instead, we're getting criticised for, as if we just want to go in there and march because we have nothing better to be doing. But one day, Adrian, one day these will all realise that these guys are right and they didn't, they're going to feel bad for it because what, we're getting slowly, slowly and surely our rights are getting stripped okay, away let me, from Let them. me ask you then what your opinion was on uh, Golfgate, this thing, this uh, do on uh, Wednesday night for some politicians. My, and... my opinion about it is no problem. It's just a game of golf. But of course it's wrong because they're the ones making the rails. They're the ones making the rails so the most, short, the most certainly should be avoiding by themselves, scandalous. But I haven't seen a big outcry about Golfgate as I did about this, as I did about these um, protests. I didn't see a big outcry about Black Lives Matter murders. No, there was, there was, protests. yes, there was, there was, John. If you uh, listen to this program was, regularly, we covered, was, we covered them several I times. I'm not saying but I'm not, I'm not in general, Adrian, there wasn't. All right, stay, stay there for a second. Here's another message I've been asked to play uh, just for you. John, no one's trying to pull wool over your eyes, love. They're just trying to put a mask on your muzzle. <laughs> Did you hear that? What the? Did you hear that message? No, here, we missed it. Here, I'll play for you again. Have a listen to this. John, no one's trying to pull wool over your eyes, love. They're just trying to put a mask on your muzzle. <laughs> Well, <laughs> look, at you know what, Adrian, look at this. We're all called the tinfoil hat wearers, when in fact these people are wearing masks. Like, come on, who's the tinfoil hat wearers here? This is madness, this is. You what I'll see. Come here, we're... Uh, uh, yeah, you see, this is the bit, John, I have to be Go honest on. with you, I don't get. We'll all Go see on. what? What you are we going to see? see what, like, if, you, if you can't see that this is bullshit, if you can't see through the lies now, you're a lost cause. And I know you can, Adrian. You're just doing your job now. But the people who can, if they honestly can't see that something's going down here and they think, oh, this is normal, just a little virus over here can live with. If they can't see something's wrong here... Is that what you see this see? as? A little virus that we can all live with? No, 100 percent. So the debt rate, so the debt rate's less than half of a of a flu vaccine. Which are of a flu, the debt rate is half it, which in fact has a vaccine. So and now, so we lock down, we lock down the whole world for for something that has a lower debt rate than the seasonal flu. Come on, will you? All right, John. Thank you for um, well. Thank, thank you for you. coming on because uh, most of the people who were at that protest on Saturday are afraid to publicly talk about it. So there well, you go. We've destroyed. invited We're loads on. Thanks, All right, come on, thank you. All right, let's have a listen to uh, some more of your messages. Uh, this is Morris. Uh, good morning, Adrian. How are you doing? Uh, I was just listening to the topic. Uh, I had a look at that protest on Saturday at the Customs House, and one video horrified me. I seen a young mother with a baby strapped to her chest, an infant, a couple of months old. I thought it was horrendous that she would bring a child into that situation. And then the video panned around, and there was the husband with her, or a partner, with a, probably a child around two years of age on his shoulders. Now, why would you expose children, regardless of what they're protesting about, why would you bring young children who have no say in the matter and need their parents to protect them and expose them to whatever viruses or whatever was going on in the air there? I think it was very, um, very immature thing to do. And I think when they look back on it and reflect on it, they say, God, we're be so stupid to bring our young children into such a situation. People do anything for attention, you know, so let them get on with us. Let's see how many of them present in hospitals in two weeks' time and see what happens. Cheers. All right, and Jeanette reckons this is what happens when people have too much time in their hands. This is a pure example of what happens when your mind is idle for way too long. It's like a cult mentality. It's like all of these like-minded people who are reading up on conspiracy theories and they're reading it like every day, every night, and then they start to believe it. And then next of all, it's out on the streets and it's affecting everybody else. Wearing a mask is you're protecting other people when you wear a mask. Whether you're asymptomatic or not, you should be wearing a mask. And you shouldn't have to be told to protect other people. I mean, if you don't, you're a selfish nasty ass anyway. I mean, oh my God, that's disgusting. Like, I would never go out there and put anyone else's life in danger. That's awful. So anyone who went out onto that street protesting, I mean... 
you, you know, you're only thinking of yourselves and your heads are way up there in this whole conspiracy theories and, you know, the government. This is new to the government. It's new to everybody. It's new to the world. It is the most, possibly the most highly contagious thing that's ever hit the planet. And like, we are suffering still and people are still suffering. And the majority of people are angry at those protesters because we're trying our utmost to do what we can to protect other people and ourselves possibly because we don't know how we're going to be affected by it. And yet you go and do this. I, I just think shame on the lot of you. Shame on you. All right. Uh, this is a message from Darren. Lads, do you know what I actually think is petty about that protest of a thousand to two thousand people or whatever it might have been? Is the fact that they come out over the most ridiculous thing ever, which is masks. Why don't they not come out when the government give themselves a pay rise? Why don't they not come out and give and protest when the government don't do anything about the homeless or about the cor- not the corruption within the the country but the unfairness of making the rich richer and the poor poorer protest about important issues wearing a mask is not overly important when you're doing it out of respect to protect others i don't agree with wearing a mask but i will do it out of respect of other people because that's how i was brought up for those people that want to be ridiculous a-holes by not wearing a mask well then they are definitely uneducated in my personal opinion all right uh, darren thank you very much indeed and one final uh, message hey adrian i have a question for that woman if uh, hopefully she's still on the line is she trying to say that all these people that have died worldwide over the last eight months wouldn't have died anyway because you know according to her what, what it sounds like Sharkova doesn't really exist anyway. It's not a pandemic. Um, you know, because it's actually ridiculous. My uncle was fit, healthy, it wasn't a terribly elderly man, got COVID-19, ended up being in intensive care. All his organs ended up shutting down because the virus just took control over his entire body. Um, and he died within 24 hours of getting um, his results back from, from his test to say the COVID-19. So... For someone like her to come on and say things like that, and it's not a pandemic, and sure, oh, uh, look, let's just let everything go back to normal. She's a gobshite and has not a clue what she's talking about. All right. Thank you. A lot of you very angry. Um, uh, well, on both sides, actually, it has to be said. Uh, Ronnie sent me this message um, on text. The people that you currently have on the radio are misinformed. The protest was uh, calling for proper discussion and with scientific backup on the extreme measures we are taking to try and combat the spread of COVID-19. We have decimated our country for a mortality rate that has proven lower than many years. It just doesn't make sense. Please allow well-informed, educated people on the radio to discuss, says uh, Ronnie. Ronnie, I uh, hope you felt that we had a balanced discussion there. Uh, We spoke to somebody who was at the protest uh, about what he was protesting about. Still haven't quite got my head around what he was protesting about, but yeah, there you go. All right, thank you very much indeed, all of you, for your calls. You're listening to 98 FM's Dublin Talks. This is Adrian Kennedy. On the way after the break, oh, do you hear this story over the weekend? That's a story that really caught my attention. Um, I've mentioned on this program many times, I'm a dog lover. We have two wonderful dogs, love them to bits. Thoughts of one of them being nicked from our house is just horrendous. Over the weekend, Gardaí seized 32 dogs that are believed to have been stolen. Uh, This happened at uh, Cochrane near uh, Swords over the weekend. The three Chihuahuas, four Pugs, one Jack Russell and 24 Dash Hounds were discovered uh, after Gardaí received a call in relation to unusual activity in the area. After further inquiries, Gardaí sought a Section 48 warrant and uh, it was executed by a number of Gardaí attached to Swords and Malahide Garda stations. And uh, like I said, it's one of those stories that uh, I just have this horrible feeling about dogs being robbed. And I want to find out if you... Have ever had a dog go missing on you? Have you ever uh, had one robbed on you? Uh, I'm going to be finding out what we all should do to protect our dogs, basically, from being nicked. We're back in just a moment. 
The sound of the city from Coolock to Cabin Teeley. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. And we're here until uh, midday today. Now, next on the programme, a topic that we've never really discussed before, dog theft. Who'd have thought that this was ever going to be a conversation, to be honest with you? If you own uh, an expensive dog, a full breed dog, do you worry that it will be taken? What precautions have you got in place to make sure that your dog isn't stolen? Or maybe you're someone who unfortunately did have a dog stolen on you. Let us know. Over the past uh, number of weeks, we've heard many stories of uh, dogs being stolen, uh, going missing, just vanishing off the face of the earth. Uh, including actually one uh, a friend of mine, he his dog was robbed and it was one uh, rare expensive breed and it just disappeared off the face of the earth. We don't know where the dog is, um, nobody has any idea. Well, over the weekend, Gardaí seized 32 dogs that are believed to have been stolen uh, following searches at uh, Cochrane and Swords. The three Chihuahuas, four Pugs, one Jack Russell and 24 Dash Hounds were discovered after Gardy received a call in relation to unusual activity in the area. And I want to find out how, how widespread this is. For example, one of the very first uh, messages that I got in. Hi, I live in Kildare and they are going around here robbing them all the time. They mark your gate first with white chalk or a cable tie and then come back and take the dog. Now, I've heard that as well, uh, that that's what they're doing. In fact, I know of somebody who had this happen only this weekend in North County, Dublin, had a um, a cable tie uh, tied onto his bin. And he has, he's a, a neighbour of mine, had a cable tie tied to his bin, and he does have uh, a dog. He does have a dog that people want to get their hands on. Call me right now on 67979081 or send me a WhatsApp voice note to 0877989898. I'm joined on the line uh, by Gillian Bird from the DSPCA. Gillian, good morning to you. Welcome to 98FM. Thank you. Good morning. This is awful. 30, what did I say, 32 dogs discovered uh, in a place in, in Swords over the weekend. Um, what's going on here? Don't know. Uh, we, the DSPCA weren't actually involved in this particular case, so it was the guards that, uh, that actually uh, initiated the case, and I know they had the dog wardens with them. Um, I don't know, but I mean, you know, we've been seizing dogs from the ports, uh, working with, in conjunction with other organisations. There does seem to be a lot of stuff going on. The price of dogs has shot through the roof. Everybody seems to want a dog at the moment. They're paying exorbitant prices for it. The only thing we can really hope in this particular case is that the dogs are microchipped, and the details are registered properly and the owners can be found straight away. Mm. That's really the really the only possible successful outcome that can come from this. Um, I know some of them were pups, so it's obviously that they were breeding um, dogs, so maybe they were breeding them for profit. But it, it's, it's going to be very interesting to actually watch the case and see what happens mm. as to how many of the animals can be reunited. In the cases that we've taken in a lot of dogs from the ports and from other cases, very few are microchipped and it seems to be a trend at the moment that all of a sudden we're back with people's dogs not being microchipped. Now microchipping your dog is like uh, giving your dog an identity because uh, with a microchip the uh, a vet can find out who owns the dog, where the dog lives, uh, phone number for the owner and all of that, isn't that right? Yeah, that's absolutely it. So the microchip is just an inert chip. It basically has a unique 15-digit code on it. It's scanned with a scanner that the vets and a rescue centres have. And that number can then be typed into a database. There's a special one called europetnet.com and anybody can actually use that database. And that'll tell you what uh, database your dog or your cat is registered on. It's then up to you, the owner, to make sure that your details are kept up to date. Because a microchip is only as good as the details that are kept on the database. Mm. There's no point having bought, and anybody out there who's got themselves a puppy there during lockdown, and you were told the puppy was microchipped, it doesn't mean it's been registered in your name unless you have actually done it and kept the details up to date. So it's really important, and especially people who've got older dogs, to make sure the details are still right on the microchip database. Mm. Um, it's the only way you're going to reunite your pet. And it's also proof of ownership because a lot of the dogs that seem to have gone missing at the moment are pedigree dogs. They are dogs that would look very similar to, to normal people. Obviously, the owners will say, oh, well, I recognise this mark and that mark. But 
it's definitive proof of ownership of a dog or microchip. Okay, now when it comes to uh, microchipping, uh, yes, it's a great thing to. Uh, we should all do it. It's actually law that you uh, that you get your your dog microchipped, yeah. isn't that correct? It um, is. Yeah, absolutely. We have both of ours done, which I'm happy about. So I know, God forbid, they. Should, well, in fact, believe it or not, one of our dogs went missing once, and uh, she made her way back to us. Thank God, thanks to her microchip. That's yeah, how we were found. That's how we were uh, we were contacted. But anyway, sorry. The, I've heard stories, and I don't know how true they are, Gillian, that in some cases some of these microchips are being cut out of dogs. We in the DSPCA have never actually come across an actual case where a chip has been removed from a living animal. Um, so yes, there, there was one case recently where I know a vet report was done to say the microchip was cut out about a month before the dog was reunited. I haven't seen that case and it didn't come through the DSPCA. But it is if you imagine the chip is the size of a piece of rice, it's it's incredibly difficult and would take precision and probably an anesthetic and an X ray machine to actually locate that chip properly without causing huge damage to the animal. Mm. So the fact of the chips being hacked out of dogs, it's it's a very rare occurrence if it if it's even happening. So it's something that people really don't need to worry about. The chances of getting your dog back that has been microchipped, is it's worth any risk. There may be the slightest risk that somebody somewhere down the line may decide they're going to try and take the chip out. It's much, it's well worth the risk that, to have your dog chipped because if your dog isn't chipped, who's to say somebody's not going to try and dig around for it anyway? Mm. Okay, so um, the the message out of a story like this... Now, Gardy, there hasn't really been much more information about these 32 dogs uh, and where they may have come from. And I know the Gardy did say on uh, social media over the weekend that they are in trying to reunite them with their with their owners. Uh, we'll have to wait and see whether that happens. But um, it is, it's not going to happen if these dogs aren't chipped. Simple as that. Absolutely. And like the likes of the dash hounds that have had puppies, chances are if they were stolen or they were just not reunited with the owners, that may have been six months or a year ago. So it's really important for anybody who has lost a dog to make sure the microchip details are up to date um, so that if these animals are reunited with the owners, then that's the best way of doing it. If they have a microchip and then they can be reunited with the owner, that's the best way of doing it. So do please make sure anybody out there keeps your microchip details up to date on your dog. Okay, so that's the the main advice in order to... And obviously then there's some practical uh, things to stop your dog being robbed out of your garden. Well, absolutely. I mean, shutting the side gate would be a start. <laughs> um, I've, I've heard a couple of cases where people reporting dogs stolen, but they didn't have side gates or they didn't have them locked. Just basically don't let your dog out of your sight. A dog under the law should be under your control at all times. So if you're going somewhere with your dog for a walk and it's new to you, you don't know where they're going, make sure they don't go out of your sight. Keep them on a lead. Keep them on a long lead if you have to. Make sure your side gates are shut. They can't get out of the garden. And please don't be advertising the walking routes you take with your dogs. I mean, people do it all the time. They're like, oh, I've done this walking route and I like to go this particular route at a particular time of the day with my dog. Don't tell people that. You know, you don't post pictures of your kids outside your house with your house number showing, so why would you do it with your dog? Hmm. Stop advertising the fact that you have a cute, fluffy dog that's worth money if somebody stole it. So just be a little bit sensible. And if you are suspicious of somebody having left something on your gate or you're suspicious of somebody following you with your dog, don't automatically go straight home. Maybe go visit somebody else. Try, report it to the guards if there's any suspicious activity but basically make sure you know where your dog is at all times and preferably don't leave them unattended Okay, now we know we're living through one sort of pandemic Have we got a pandemic of dog thefts in Ireland? The figures that we have in the DSPCA for the numbers of dogs reported lost and the numbers of dogs reported found which very rarely match up, interestingly um, no, it's about the same as it was this time last year. It's just we seem to have had a flurry of activity and social media has, has brought all this stuff. There is some genuine cases of dogs that have been stolen. But I think at the end of the day, it's really important that people who lose their dogs report them to the right place and people who find dogs report them to the right place, which at the end of the day is your local dog wardens so that they can have the records there and they can be matched. So, you know, it's, it's very interesting that the number of found dogs that we cannot reunite with animals is, is huge and nearly as many as the lost dogs, but they just never match up. 
All right. So uh, make sure your dog is chipped. That's one way to try and get uh, him or her back should they uh, disappear. Absolutely. And last thing as well, for anybody out there who's got an older dog, make sure you take plenty of photographs of your pet. There's no point in posting a picture of your 10-year-old dog and the photographs you have of them or as a six-week-old puppy. That's a very good point, actually. I never even thought of that. Yep. Yes, All right. Uh, Gillian Bird from the DSPCA, thank you very much indeed for talking to us here at 98FM. Um, let's go to uh, Gary. You're on 98FM. How are you, Gary? How are you? Gary, you're saying that this is going on for years. For years. So I live in the Crumlin area and I, I recently moved to Rakar and I've seen two old snow people that I know. And he had one of them so expensive dogs and they were telling me they were going down to collect the reward money. They were going down to collect... So, what, they're robbing the dogs, then... Uh... They come back out a few days later, have a look for the... No, I miss, I miss me, me pet poster. They see the award reward. And then they... Uh, they ring. Miraculously find the dog and bring it back. They collect the money. That's going on years. Yeah, it, it, and yeah, I have heard stories of like that in the past, but, uh, you know, hearing the stories that I've been hearing about marking your front gate or putting a tag on your uh, on your gate, a cable tie, it's a little bit more sinister than just trying to get a few bob. Do you know yeah, what I mean? That's uh, Trying to scam some old lady out of a few bob. Yeah, it was, it was, that's been going on years, and most old ladies miss their dogs for a long time, so they're willing to pay their money very quick. Hmm. All they yep. do is go to parks, watch with them walk around, watch them going back, and they come back a few days later. Yep. I, like I said, I've heard of it before. Let's have a listen to this WhatsApp voice note from Jessica. Hi, Adrian. It's absolutely heartbreaking to see what's going on with the dogs. I've been in Wexford for the last couple of weeks, and the theft and the marks they're leaving down there to marks on stones and tiebacks, it's absolutely heartbreaking. And that's on mobile sites and throughout. All right, Jessica, thanks very much indeed. 67979081 is our telephone number. You can text, you can WhatsApp, or you can send a WhatsApp voice note to 0877989898. We're talking about dog theft, and I want to hear your stories if you know of um, uh, people putting cable ties or uh, bits of chalk on your front door. Like I said, I only happen, it only happened to a neighbour of mine over this past weekend where a cable tie was uh, left tied to uh, his bin and he thought it was actually something to do with the, the bin company but it's not uh, Jess you're on 98FM hi Jess hi how are now, you now I just played your voice note there a second ago um, and y- 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 you're talking about County Kildare no I must have been in Wexford for oh the sorry last, in Wexford um, okay yeah go on yeah, for the last couple of um, the last couple of weeks and an awful lot of that on the mobile site and down around now, people used to go, uh, you know, leave their dogs on deck and then go off to the beach and all this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Where now, nobody will. And it's it's common that uh, don't leave your dog on the deck, don't walk your dog on your own on the beach and all this. And I have a little teacup of Maltese. And the amount of people that had said to me, don't, don't let Leave that dog out of your sight. And he'd be only my first dog, if you like. Right. And they said, don't let him out of your sight there. It's all after. And everyone on the site, Everyone on the sites now is kind of holding their dogs. It's not free anymore, mm. if you know what I mean. It's not like we all look after them. And have there dogs. been examples, Jess, of, of animals actually being stolen, or is it because of rumours spreading around? No, there's in um, there's chalk on the deck. You know, leave your deck yep. on the mobile. You have chalk. Then you would have cable ties, like what you just spoke about. Then you'd have markings. It could be a ribbon. Um, it could be aunt, but they go around in vans and all this kind of thing. And one of my neighbours actually did, she was on her way down and she followed a van and reported it. And now she didn't see anything, but it was reported. Right. But like that, it's, it's all over the sites, as in, you know, the sites that watch out for your dog and dogs go missing and all. But really down there, it's just, I think it's worse, if I'm honest. Okay, so you are not letting your, or haven't let your little dog out of your sight at all? No, and normally we would, you know, even bigger dogs would be left on the deck if you're gone, say, shopping or anything down there. Nothing like that now. All right, Jess, thanks very much indeed. 6797981 is our telephone number. Uh, Quick break, Neve. I'll take your call straight after the break. Don't go away. 
The sound of the city from Adamstown to Artane. This is 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. As you know, uh, many of us aren't, uh, most of us aren't venturing uh, very far at the moment. Maybe a staycation around the country, but we all, uh, well, most of us listening to this programme live here in Dublin and like to spend time in Dublin, uh, if at all possible. Uh, Well, we here at 98FM's Dublin Talks have uh, teamed up with visitdublin.com as we discover, in some cases, for the very first time, some of the stuff that's available in this uh, city. Um, Like many of us, you've probably been exploring around Dublin more than normal uh, this summer. So with that in mind, I am looking for your tips, suggestions and recommendations for the best places, attraction and activities to visit around the Liberties, Smithfield and Stony Batter areas. So, I want you to imagine you're a taxi driver, or maybe you are a taxi driver, and somebody around that sort of area, the Liberties, Smithfield and Stony Batter, asks you, oh, where where should I go? Where would you say? Where would you recommend visiting in the Liberties, Smithfield or Stony Batter areas of of Dublin City? Send me a WhatsApp voice note right now to 0877 98 98 98. You're a tour guide. Well, you're not, but... You know what I mean. Uh, Where would you recommend, where have you been that you think was just amazing and that you would highly recommend uh, our listeners uh, visit? So we're talking about the Liberties, Smithfield and Stony Batter area of the city centre. Where would you recommend I visit? Send me a WhatsApp voice note right now to 0877 98 98 98. 0877 98 98 98. And I'll take them in just a second after I take just two more calls on the dogs uh, being robbed. Steve, you were so fearful of uh, your dog being robbed that you actually uh, bring it to work with you now. Yeah, I do indeed, yeah. Um, I, there's been a state of robberies up around where I live and there's nothing but dog posters up about missing dogs and all this and um, I'm actually self-employed so I can bring my dog so I wouldn't leave, we don't leave my uh, dog at home on his own at ever. all now. Ever. ever right okay because no. of and what sort of a dog have you got I've got a little cocker spaniel okay and does, does your little cocker spaniel love going to work with you Oh, he does, yeah, because he yeah. gets an extra walk when he gets down to the workshop, so he loves it. <laughs> very good, very good. Okay, so, yeah. and unfortunately, it's not something that everybody can do. Um, some people are forced to have to leave the dog at home for a couple of hours, and, and that is risky, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Well, we we were thinking about getting even those one of those cameras, you know, the camera you can see the, see a dog. Yes. <laughs> Just to make sure he's all right if we can't bring him with us. Yeah, I was going to get one of them myself, to be honest. Um, yeah. Yeah, and where you can actually just on your phone look and see how the how he's getting on yeah. at home. Yeah, yeah. Make sure he's still in the garden or whatever. Okay, but there were so many dog thefts around where you are uh, that you decided, right, I'm not going to take the risk here. No, exactly, exactly. We waited two years to get the dog, you know what I mean? So there was top put into it, so I'm not losing him. I'm not getting someone letting someone absolutely. rob them. Just, yeah, absolutely. You know, no, away. Fair play to you. I'd love to be able to bring ours to work with me as well, but I don't know. Yeah. How I, I don't know how well it'll go down here if I brought them in. I'll give oh, it a try, actually. <laughs> yeah, you should try it. <laughs> you should try it. Yeah. All right. Good yeah. to talk to you, Steve. Thanks very much indeed. And uh, one last call, Neve. You're on ninety eight FM. You you heard that caller a couple of minutes ago. You live in Wexford. Uh, yeah, about right. about the fear in Wexford. Yeah, I think she's right, and uh, we seem to have been for some reason hit fairly hard at this weather. It's access to the port at Ross Lair. I don't know. Um, I know a neighbour two doors down from me. She's the only one that had something put in her bin, which is odd because she is the only one. Mm. There's a row of five of us. We all have dogs. She's the only one, one of these breeds that they seem to be looking for. She has, uh, she, he's, she's a gorgeous little thing, but she is one of the, the Bichons. And because she's female, you can't tell if she's been neutered. I mean, my guy... Obviously, you can tell. Um, and he's a big, he's an Akita, you know. Nobody's going to rob him. Try, you can try, you know. And I, I'm at home, so he, I don't leave him out if I'm going out, purely because he would bark at a leaf, and he's got a big, loud bark. So out of consideration, I bring him in if I'm not here. Because hmm. if I'm here, I can tell him to be quiet. But it, it, that one person had something put on their bin, and it was very obvious that it, it had What been was it, a there. cable tie? It was a white cable tie. Yeah, yeah and like I said, the, the, a neighbour of mine only yesterday I was speaking to him and there was a cable tie in his bin, but he assumed it was the bin company. It's not. It's not the bin no, company not, doing that. No, it was. 
No, the only time you'd ever get anything from the bin company is if you might forget to pay the bill and they'd put a sticker yeah. on your bin. Yeah, and that's, and that's about it. Yes. Yes. But it's certainly but not, a, it's not, not a cable time. With, no, they've no need to put cable time. Yeah, so just be very wary. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I'm just wondering if, if, if Wexford and the, the counties down lower are getting hit harder because we are close to Ross Lair. You can put the dogs in the boot and... And head on, yeah, that's true. Actually, I never thought of that. Yeah, yeah, I never thought of that. All right, Neve. thanks very much indeed for your call and uh, thank you all of you for your calls. This is 98FM's uh, Dublin Talks. Just mind the dog and do what Gillian said. If you haven't got your dog uh, microchipped yet, it's a simple process. It's not overly expensive and uh, it's basically giving your dog an identity and a way uh, to make its way back to you should it go missing or should it be robbed or whatever. Anyway, uh, now let's go back to what I want to talk to you about. Places in the Liberties, Smithfield and uh, Stony Batter area of Dublin that you would recommend to a tourist to visit. Okay, so I'm off on my staycation this weekend, uh, but then when I come back, going to spend a good bit of time around the city. Where would you suggest I go on the Liberty, Smithfield, or Stony Batter? This is Tom. I'd highly recommend the National History Museum. I think it was Collins' Barracks before. Fantastic. And it's free. It's free. And in fact, Keith is on about the same thing. Hi, Adrian. I highly recommend um, Collins' Barracks um, as it's just full of art now and it's just a fabulous building of history. I actually had an uncle that was stationed there before it was closed down um, in the Irish Army. Um, and being over Smithfield, you tell them to track over to Kameon Jail. It's just worth a trip. It's my fa- most favourite place in Dublin is Kameon Jail. All right, now, uh, I I did say this a couple of weeks ago on the show that I am going to Kilmainham Jail. I haven't been yet, but I am going to go and maybe make a whole day out of it and go to uh, Collins Barracks as well because that sounds, uh, it does sound wonderful. Both places, to my shame, and I've lived all my life in Dublin, I've never been to either of them. So um, I am definitely going to do uh, one of them over the, the next couple of weeks. Where would you recommend even to a fellow dub to visit in the Liberties, the Smithfield or the Stony Batter areas of Dublin uh, send me a WhatsApp voice note to 0877 98 98 98 0877 98 98 98 one place I would recommend uh, and in fact our Jeremy said the same thing and I've been there a couple of, uh, couple of times and it's fantastic is the Lighthouse Cinema in Smithfield if you've never been there, it's a fabulous place. And it goes right down underground, and uh, it's it's just a nice cinema. It really is. It's particularly nice. Now, here's a place I have been before. Uh, this is from Jade. Not too sure about the Liberties or Stony Batter, but the Jemison Distillery in Smithfield would be a good tourist attraction. It is. I've been there, and it is well worth visiting. It really is, if you've uh, never done it. And like we said, this is all about, you know, um, discovering our own city. Because we, we tend not to do the touristy things in our own city. And then you go to... Barcelona or Madrid, you do all the touristy things, but when you're in your own city, you don't. And if you've never been to Jemison Distillery, well worth a visit. And in fact, I just got a message from uh, somebody, well, that's an Australian number, uh, saying the Jemison tour uh, is good crack in Smithfield. So thank you very much indeed. Um, the, oh, here's Jade again. Also, um, Kilmainham Jail isn't too far from the Liberties. I think it's like a nine-minute drive. It is, just across the river. Um, and another place uh, well worth visiting. Uh, Noel sent me this message. Me, Noel here, can't talk. I recommend Jemson Whiskey Tours. Great. Done it a few times. I love it. Well, I haven't done it a few times. Now, you must love your whiskey, Noel. I've, I've done it just the once. And I really enjoyed it. It really was uh, very enjoyable. Um, now, I don't know who sent me this. Uh, an unnamed individual... Hi Adrian, a great day out is to visit 14 Henrietta Street. We went there last week, very interesting, quite moving. And we went on then to the Jemison Distillery Tour. That was really good and a great day. Right, so lots of people are saying the Jemison Tour. Uh, If you've not done it, it is worth doing. And 14 Henrietta Street is a a museum that's located just off uh, Henrietta Street. Uh, it opened in September uh, 2018 and it's all about tenement life in uh, Dublin. Um, I was mentioning the Lighthouse Cinema a couple of minutes ago. This guy loves the place. Adrian, I didn't hear what you were saying properly there. Yeah, the Lighthouse Cinema, the Cobblestone and Kilmainham. Yeah, definitely. The Lighthouse Cinema is an amazing place. I definitely recommend that. 
yeah, the classic films and have a beer and all. It's a great place. Yeah, it really is. I love the Lighthouse Cinema, I have to be honest with you. Uh, so, uh, some great suggestions. Uh, so, Collins Barracks. Oh, Dublinia. Nobody mentioned Dublinia. Another place that's well worth uh, visiting is Dublinia at uh, Christchurch Cathedral. Um, where else is there? Oh, Teeling's Distillery. That's up around um, the Coombe area. And that's a, a, a relatively new distillery here in Dublin. We were actually there at the launch of it a couple of years ago, and it's an amazing place. It's well worth a visit. And obviously, who didn't, who didn't come up with this one? The Guinness Storehouse. I mean, you, you just have to visit it. If you've never done the touristy thing, uh, and obviously without the tourists this year, um, Guinness's uh, it, tour isn't as busy as it normally would because there's no Americans and everything else. Do it while they're not here because hopefully by next year they'll be back uh, swarmed with Americans again. Uh, but this year it's quieter than it normally would be and well worth um, a visit. All right, there you go. Thank you very much indeed, all of you, uh, for your suggestions. Sorry, just one more that I meant to play. This is from Andy. Hi, Adrian. Actually, I haven't done Kermainham House myself, and I'm from Dublin A Army Life. But one place you should do is called Vaults Live. It's on John's Lane Church, just off Thomas Street. Uh, great old spot. It's all about the old history of Dublin. Great old spot to go to. All right, good man, Andy. Thanks very much indeed. And there are a few more. Unfortunately, I don't have time to uh, to play them. St Mickens Church is amazing, says a message that's just come in to me as well. All right, time's up, I'm afraid. We're back with you again tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And if there's anything you want to bring up on tomorrow's programme, send me an email right now to dublintalks at 98fm.com. Have a good uh, Monday. I'll talk to you tomorrow morning at 10. Barry Dunn is next. And on the next hour, he's got some great music lined up like these.